Hey guys, welcome to another 5 minute tip. In this tip, we're going to be using a plugin that I like a lot. I believe it's pronounced Throusy, and uh, it essentially allows you to break objects into smaller pieces. It's been around for a while, and I'm sure that some of you already know about it. But the first thing you'll need to do is get this plugin installed if you'd like to follow along. So the best way to do that is to go to nitro4d.com and under the freebies or the donationware, there are two different versions of Throusy. Either version should work for this tutorial. You can get the free version or you can support the author and get the donationware version. I think he asks for about $10 and that's pretty uh, affordable and fair, I think. So once you've downloaded the plugin file, you'll need to install it into your plugins menu like this. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the edit menu Go to your preferences and then click the button that says open preferences folder. So once you click that, it'll open up a Windows Explorer or a uh, Mac OS Finder window and there's a plugins folder. Just place the file in there and you should be good to go. Okay, so now that you've got Throusy installed, you should be able to access it from the plugins menu right here. I'm just going to open the Throusy dialog and leave it right here for the duration of the cast. So I have this column here, sort of a uh, Corinthian column object, and I want to cut it in half because we can break this column using Throusy. Maybe I'll show you how to do that first. So I'm going to select the floor and under simulation tags I'm going to add a collider body. Throusy is going to create a fracture object for us. We've seen those before in some of the other videos and having a collision tag on the floor will make our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to break the column one into, let's say, eight different pieces randomly. I am also going to keep the original object. So when I click break now, it processes it a little bit and it doesn't look like much has happened. But you can see here that it's hidden our original object and it's created a new fracture object with all of our pieces inside of it. So you can actually start to pull pieces away from the column now. And this is pretty basic stuff. Anyone who's used this plugin before will know these things. Another cool thing that you can do is, I'm just going to move these back into place, is that you can just turn the fracture object on and then press play and everything falls apart quite nicely. But it doesn't look very realistic. We can help this if we use the Veroni mode instead. So I'm going to delete that fractured object, unhide our original column, and switch it to Veroni. If I click break now, it may take a little bit longer, depends on the structure. But we can then enable that object, press play again, and the cuts look a little bit different. You know, they don't look as random, and that's expected. But again, it doesn't look very realistic. So what I've found is that the easiest way to make a realistic crumbling column is to use a Boolean object to cut it the way we want, sort of halfway down, like right around here, and then cause the upper part of it to crumble. So let's walk through how we do that. First, I'll start by creating a landscape primitive. This is a nice object because it already has a rough surface that we can use. So I'm just gonna scale it down and sort of position it where I want it. Right around there should be fine. But in order to do a Boolean operation on this object, we need it to be solid. So the first thing I'll do is press the letter C key to convert it to an editable object. I'm going to go to polygon mode. And then we can use the, fill po the close polygon hole tool. We just hover near the base and it should give us that highlight. And then we just click. And now we have a polygon covering the entire base of the landscape object. So we can just control click or extrude to enclose the rest of the object. I'm going to switch to wireframe mode here. So we can see that the landscape is now enclosing the column completely. And now our Boolean will work. Now we need to do the Boolean operation twice. So this is going to be a little tricky, but just follow me. I'm going to create a Boolean object, a bool, 
and then I'm going to put both of these objects inside of it. Now initially it looks like they're flipped around because we actually want the column to subtract, well the landscape to subtract from the column. So going back to shaded mode we can see that that actually looks pretty good. That's a nice spot where the break occurs. But we're going to lose the rest of our object. So what we'll do is we'll just copy these two out of the out of the bool hierarchy and put them over here for now. We can even hide them if we like. Actually, it might just be easier, I'm going to undo, to just copy them into another bool object. So I'll copy the bool object we have so that we have two. And this way we can just change the mode. So we change it from A subtract B to A intersect B and now we get the top portion. So it's where the column intersects the landscape object, we have another section of the object. So I'm going to select both Boolean objects, high quality, create single object, hide new edges, and create fong breaks at intersections. See that's going to clean up where they join. So then I can just right click both of them and say current state to object. And what that'll give us is two additional objects. So I'm just going to delete the bool objects because we have our new objects here. And I'm going to bring these polygonal objects outside of the nulls that were created for them. So that was a lot, but you can always pause the video and go back. But what we end up with is a top part and a bottom part, which is what we wanted. So we now have this that we can name top, and we have this lower part that we can name bottom. So this is a better starting point to use throughout C, I think. So we can use the top part only and just leave the bottom part as a stationary object. And that means we're going to need a collision tag for it. So I'm going to copy this dynamics body tag onto the bottom part so it stays put and it affects the collisions. The next thing we do is click the top object and break it using throw C. So let's start with six pieces. Start small. And now we click the break now button and it broke it into about six pieces. I'm going to switch to wireframe sort of shaded mode so you can see the pieces a little bit. So you can see it's broken it up into a few pieces. It's not going to be that spectacular, but I have a trick for that. If we were to enable this object and then press play, it's kind of what we expect. It's a little more realistic. You know, the whole column doesn't disintegrate, just the top part of it disintegrates. But it still looks kind of weird because it just collapses. Nothing causes it to collapse. So let's do that part now. I'm going to create a boulder. So this boulder will just be made of a platonic object. Let's switch to the four views. So this is the top view here, and I want it to just swing by and hit it from behind. So I'll start over here and select the object, go to the coordinates tab, click the P's for position, and then just control click the dots. So that's our first keyframe at zero. I'm going to bring this all the way over to 60 frames. And what I really want is I want this object to sort of swing by and just hit it from behind as it goes off screen. And so I move it there and then I control click P again to get the position. So let's go back to the full perspective view and see what that looks like. Well it looks fine except the column collapses too soon. So what we can do is we can go to the Throusy object, the, the fracture object, we can go to the simulation tag for that. And we can change the trigger from immediately to on collision. So if we press play, nothing happens. Well, that's mostly because this boulder in the background is not colliding. The reason it's not colliding is that we didn't add a collision tag to it. So I'm just going to control drag one of these collision tags to the platonic and convert it to an editable object. That way it's made of polygons and it can participate in the simulation. Now, if I play back the simulation, you see that that object sort of 
makes it break. We do have a bit here that's still floating in the air. And that's kind of a funny glitch. But we can probably fix that by just changing the way it collides or changing the size of our boulder so that it, it sort of collides with everything. And we can probably just move this point here so it starts a little bit higher. Now we have that. So that looks much better in my opinion, you know? So we have we have an outside object that obviously you can you can style differently, you can put a fong tag on it so it doesn't look so strange. And this object is coming and hitting our column and breaking it off. That makes sense. But the part that still doesn't make sense to me, or at least doesn't look right, is the fact that it's still all of these big chunks. You think that if a column broke, there would be some big chunks and a lot of smaller chunks. So we can do that part now. We can see we have all of these different pieces here. There's a large piece down there, there's a piece around back, a piece on the top. I think the pieces on the top should remain large, but these pieces down here should really break into much smaller chunks. So this piece right here, I'm just going to pull it out. That should break into about, I'd say 30 pieces. So we can select pieces six, and then in the Throusi dialog here, we can actually just enter 30 and leave it as Veroni for now. And then you click break now. Now, the plugin is clever enough to understand what you're trying to do, and so it just places the additional pieces in the same hierarchy. And that works out pretty well, because now when we break it, whoop, what happened is because it regenerated the object, it's turned off. So I'll just make sure to turn it back on every time you regenerate pieces. So now we can press play. And we can see that it breaks, but there's more pieces falling down there. And you can just repeat that process until you're happy with it. So it's easier to select the pieces if it's turned off. So I'm going to select this piece now. Let's break that piece into 30. Great. Now let's select this piece and break that into 30. Now it doesn't always give you 30 more pieces exactly, because I think it's trying to be a little bit efficient about the way it breaks the object up. And so you can just keep selecting pieces and keep fracturing areas that you think should sort of suffer from more stress. So it looks pretty good. This area of the column is clearly more cracked than the rest of it. And then we can just turn the object back on and play back our simulation. And you can see we have a much more catastrophic event near the middle there where those pieces break. Now you can really change how this simulation looks by adjusting the uh, friction parameters. So if I were to select all of the objects that are colliders, like the platonic object, the floor, the bottom piece of the column, and then I go to the collision tab, you can change the bounce and the friction. So I'm going to change the bounce to 2% the friction to 10%. And you can see that really gives a different look. And we can also do that with the Throusi object itself. So we can change the bounce of it to 2%. Rock doesn't bounce that much. And a friction of um, 80%. I think I did that wrong before. I think I wanted to increase the friction, not reduce it to 10. So let's increase it to 90%. There we go. So all the pieces just sort of hit the ground and come to a, a stop instead of scattering everywhere. And this gives you a much more, in, in my opinion, a much more realistic account of what would happen if something came and smashed this column open. So this was a longer tip. Uh, we covered quite a few different things, you know, different ways to uh, break objects apart using a boolean, and then uh, the actual Throusi plugin and how it can help you really quickly make objects that break apart. Um, effects like this are best combined with other particle, fe particle effects or smoke that you add in, maybe After Effects or some other program. But for getting the initial sort of broken structure going with all the gravity involved, this is a really good tool and it's free. You know, the, 
The better version is donationware, and you should definitely support the author. And you can even use this sort of stuff in space. If you were to turn the gravity off, so I think... see where is the gravity I think that might be in the project settings you can turn the gravity to zero and now when it breaks apart you get a much more floating in space sort of look so I hope you enjoyed this tip it was a very long one it was hardly five minutes maybe it was a few different tips combined into one um, until next time see ya